Revelation 1366 From the 1st of April 1940 God's Consent God's Permissions Satan's Work Man pays too little attention to the events around him, and he cannot be convinced in any way that everything fits into the divine world order according to a wise plan, therefore everything has to happen as it does, although the will of man is often the direct cause. A distinction must be made between God's consent according to his will, and God's permissions of what man's will itself has caused. It is so difficult to make people understand this that God can never give his consent when man makes decisions that go against his, will. But since he again does not hinder people's free will, those measures which are an unmistakable work or influence of evil, must now be formed by God in such a way that they can still produce success for the soul of man in a certain respect. And this again lets man come to the conclusion that it, is the will of God and hence do activities which unmistakably betray evil influence, plunge whole peoples into trouble and misery. If God would not allow such things and would therefore mercilessly exterminate the authors of suffering and misery or make them harmless, then people would be deprived of any possibility to distinguish between good and evil, because then only the good would have to assert itself, while all evil would be exterminated immediately. So God allows the evil power to run riot and only always protects his own from being at the mercy of this power, by averting all harm from them. And may the evil forces therefore work without interruption, this work will always be weakened in its consequences, man will always draw benefit for his soul from it, if he offers enough resistance to the evil forces and asks God's help for it because if God would not oppose it with his love, the adversary's temptations would truly be overwhelming and man could easily succumb in the fight against it. In this way, however, every event is permitted by God, so that the work of the adversary is clearly enough recognizable and man learns to detest it. Then, however, man should also recognize his own powerlessness if he believes that he can master everything in life by his own strength. Man needs the grace of God, and the more threatening the events from outside approached the earthly child, the sooner he will be able to ask for grace. And therefore even the most difficult event is beneficial for the soul in the spiritual sense. Only the human being will truly master life on earth who sees every event as God's providence and devotedly finds his way into it, always desiring divine help if it seems insurmountable, and thus remains in closest union with God. Satan's work will therefore not always be able to express itself as intended, but the Lord God will also intervene in a restraining way and avert or weaken the effects, because if his power would not also extend over such evil forces, everything on earth and in the universe would truly already be destroyed, because evil's destructive urge is enormous, but it is powerless against the divine will. However, the Lord allows his work as far as it marks the complete decline of mankind, and if man pays attention to the events around him, he will recognize how far Satan's activity goes, and he will learn to detest it if only a spark of divine spirit slumbers in him. So even the lowest deed can again cause man to find his way to God and, recognizing the contemptibility of evil, raise his hands in supplication to God for deliverance from such violence. And God will hear such a prayer, and then has exactly the work of Satan caused the return to God. Thus an event devised by devilish power against God's will, has been allowed to let man find the way to God again. Amen.